Hello everyone, this is Jay Eichel. In this video, I'm going to cover 15 vegetables that you must grow in April. Now, some of these vegetables you can grow indoors in your house or your greenhouse, but some you can even track so outside in your garden as well. Now, I'm in zone 9, so for every zone above zone 9, subtract 10 days, and every zone lower than zone 9, add 10 days to all the dates I give you. So let's get started. Number one, okra. Now I'm in zone nine and my last frost date was around March 24. So I can directly seed okra in the first week of April. Now I also studied okra indoors in March as well. Now if you're in zone seven and below, you must start okra indoors until the danger of frost and snow is over. Now if you're starting okra indoors, use these peat pots or cow pots or biodegradable pots like these because okra does not like being transplanted. So if you use these biodegradable pots, you can just plant them with the pots into your ground and the plants will not experience any transplant shock and that will make the okra plants do much better. Now okra takes three months to harvest from the time to start your seeds. You can expect to start harvesting okra from July, August, all the way until September and October. Number two, cucumbers. And cucumbers are one of my favorites. They are really refreshing and they're really good in salads and sandwiches. However, they can be a little bit tricky to grow because if you are not consistent in watering the cucumbers, they can turn out bitter. They love consistent and frequent watering. Number three, Armenian cucumbers. Now, Armenian cucumbers never turn out bitter. So if you have trouble growing the regular cucumbers, I highly suggest growing Armenian cucumbers. And Armenian cucumbers are actually melons. They are not cucumbers. They just taste like cucumbers. Now check out the size difference between a regular cucumber and an Armenian cucumber. The Armenian cucumber is almost double the size and you get a lot more harvest and a lot more poundage out of each plant than you get from regular cucumbers. Number four melons such as watermelons, cantaloupes and all different kind of melons. Now I start my melons in the first week of April and I directly seed my melon seeds into my ground outside in the garden. If you're in zone eight you can do the same in mid-April however if you're in zone seven and below I highly recommend starting your melon seeds indoors because your growing season is much shorter. This way you can get head start on growing your melons. Number five, squash. And there are lots of different varieties of squash. You can grow yellow Kryptonite squash, you can grow black beauty zucchini, or even golden zucchini. Now I started some of my squash seeds indoors in mid-March and they are ready to be planted outside. I don't want them to get too big because then the roots get disturbed and they don't do too well. So I'm going to plant these outside because the danger of frost is over in the first week of April. I'm also direct seeding squash seeds in the first week of April as well. When direct seeding, I plant two or three seeds together so I don't waste any garden space and I thin them later. Now regarding winter squashes such as butternut squash and spaghetti squash, I usually wait till May and I directly seed them outside and they are ready by September. Number six, pumpkins. Now you can grow sugar pie pumpkins, Cinderella pumpkins, and all sorts of different kinds of pumpkins as well. And I directly seed my pumpkins outside in the ground around mid-April or end of April as well. I do not start them indoors because pumpkins are actually really fast growing. So there is no point of growing them indoors and take up extra space indoors. Number seven, gourds. And the variety of gourd that I like to grow is bitter gourd. And the name is true. They are actually very bitter, but they're really good for you and they're packed with vitamin C. I directly sow the bitter gourd seeds outside in my garden in the first and second week of April. When starting bitter gourd, I highly recommend soaking the seeds of bitter gourd in water for at least 24 hours, whether starting them indoors or planting them directly outside. You can also do the same with squash and pumpkin seeds as well. Now if you're in lower zone and you're expecting frost and snow in April, all the vegetables that I'm direct seeding, you can always start them indoors in April as well. Number eight, asparagus. Now you can start asparagus seeds indoors or you can also directly plant them outside in April all throughout the April as well. Now a much better way to start asparagus is buying asparagus crowns. That gives you a head start on growing asparagus because they already have established roots. Now asparagus is a perennial from zone 3 to zone 9. Asparagus plants can withstand temperature to 0 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 18 degrees Celsius. The asparagus plant might die back in winter, but they will keep on coming back year after year. Now with asparagus, you don't want to take any harvest the first year. Let the ferns grow. The second year, you can take about half the harvest. In the third year, you can start harvesting a lot of asparagus. The asparagus plants will keep producing asparagus for up to 20 years. So be ready to eat a lot of asparagus every spring. 
number nine artichokes and you can directly sow the seeds of artichokes in your garden in april as well and artichokes are also perennial from zone 7 to zone 11. they can withstand temperatures down to 20 degrees fahrenheit which is 96 degrees celsius artichoke plants can live up to 10 years and they will produce a lot of artichokes throughout their lifespan both artichokes and asparagus make a really good addition to your perennial garden. Now, I like to keep my videos really short and right to the point. I like to pack a lot of information in my videos. So if you're liking the content so far, consider subscribing and turn on the bell notifications. Number 10, shives. Now, shives are also perennial from zone 3 to zone 9. They can also withstand temperature down to 0 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 18 degrees Celsius. And shives make a really good herb and really good addition to your garden as well. And bees absolutely love the flowers of shives as well. And shives will also make a really good addition to your landscape if you only want to use them to display flowers in your landscape as well. The plants of shives can live up to 5 years and some varieties can even live up to 10 years. Number 11, corn. Now you have to be very careful about the variety of corn you grow because once I planted popcorn over here in California and the temperature went above 100 degree Fahrenheit and guess what? My cobs did not fill up. Half of the cobs were empty and the kernels were very sparse. Research the variety of corn that will grow really well in your region. Number 12, green beans. Now green beans are super easy to grow. You can directly seed green beans in your garden in April. You can also start your green beans indoors as well and get a head start on growing green beans. Now there are vining varieties of green beans and there are also bush beans as well, such as contender beans. No matter which variety you grow, green beans end up giving you a really good harvest. Number 13, basil. And basil is one of my favorite herbs to grow. I love to grow basil in partial shade because the temperature in summer over here can reach over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So basil leaves will get really sharp and really hard if they're grown in full sun in extreme heat. However, if you grow them in partial shade, the basil leaves will get really broad and really big to capture the sunlight and they will be very tender as well. Also, if you properly prune your basil plant, you can make your basil plant grow really big and bushy and create a lot of basil leaves. I have a video on the complete guide on growing basil, so check that out if you're interested. The link will be in the description. Number 14, parsley. Now, parsley is super easy to grow. Now, if you have trouble growing coriander or cilantro, you are not alone. Cilantro is very temperamental. As soon as the temperature starts to climb up and gets up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, cilantro tends to bolt and you don't get too much of a harvest. However, parsley is fail safe. Start your parsley in April and you'll have a lots of parsley to use all throughout summer all the way until fall. Number 15, potatoes. Now, I start planting my potatoes about a week before my last frost date. So I start planting my potatoes around March 20th, and I plant them all the way until April 20th. So you can start your potatoes a week before your last frost date, all the way up to three weeks after your last frost date. So for zone 9, 8, and 7, April is the best month to start growing your potatoes. I have a separate video on how to make your own seed potatoes from grocery store potatoes and all the steps involved in planting potatoes and what you need to plant your potatoes to get a really big harvest. So check those videos out. I'll leave a link in the description. Now here are some honorable mentions. Rhubarb, leeks, celery, and parsnips. You could also choose to grow these in April as well. Now if you're in zone seven and below, you can also directly seed root vegetables outside in your garden after the danger of frost and snow is over. Now I've already done this outside in my garden in March in zone nine. Now I've also started tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants in February as well. So if you're lagging behind, you can always buy them from a nursery and plant them outside in your garden after the danger of frost is over. Now if you're in zone seven and below, you can also plant the vegetables that I usually plant in zone nine in March. So you can check out that video right here and I'll see you in another video.